back into playoffs. It's going to be a rough week or two. They have themselves JDG also on the table, which can potentially drop their game score. Game score is very important. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already going to get themselves, um, you know, only a plus or minus one from this one. It's already 1-1. One, one. They can't help themselves too much from that. If they win this last game, they'll leapfrog over LNG and anyone's legend. And they will get themselves there. If they lose, they stay in 10th. In fact, actually, I believe they drop... Uh, yeah, no, they will stay in themselves in 11th, rather. They'll be out of that plus bracket. Anyway, last draft to determine things. Back to bot lane bans, which is how LGD um, walked away with a good mid lane matchup in game one. It was the Ari versus Annie, which really favored Hychow, walked away with MVP. I wonder if Weibo last ban out the Ari just to stop Hychow having a similar performance. Yeah, and I think we found our talismans for both these teams, and I don't think it's a surprise, but it's basically... Have Xiao Hao and Xiao Hu read the early game? Yes, Weibo look good. On the other side, is Hai Chao on a playmaker and being considered in the make in the plays he's making? All good for LGD because other members of these teams have been playing relatively consistently. Birdle, pretty solid. Uh, you look on the other side, L L Light, pretty good as well. It's other members that need to step up for the plate a little bit for these teams to win. Bands are through, the Ari remains in. First pick, Karma from LGD. What now is the response from Weibo Gaming? So, Xiaohu has had a couple of um, kind of champions he's gone back towards. One of them has been the Annie as of recent. We've seen the Karma and we've seen the Talia. Now, the thing is, Karma is the one which beats up the early game best amongst them. You could go towards something like that, Nico. The Xiaohu has been a big Tristana. You said oh, yeah. you said he was that player, Trist. Historically, he's been that this split as well. It's been one of his best champions in this year. Wouldn't surprise me to see him lock that in. Um, it does lose early to the Karma, but for Xiaohu and Light, it can be a flex pick between them. And of course, as the game goes on, the Tristana does become a little more difficult to manage. But yes, one of the big powers of the Tristana is the early shove, and Karma pretty hard to beat that at the minute, particularly once Malignance comes on through. She is a priority machine. She was a doctor all those years ago, we called her that. Um, on the other side, though, it'll be the Shinzao being hovered. Locked in, Meteor decides instead to lock in the Nautilus for his support. It means that you get one of the prime lane pairings for Tristana and bot side away. It means you can potentially go towards something like a Senna later into the draft for Senna Nautilus. I won. Do you just lock in the Rumble right now, actually, and just go? But the problem with that, the prop, the problem with that is that you have the Karma, who doesn't really synergize with the Rumble as a pick in terms of the team fights that you want. Okay. Something like the Aatrox, it's for me works out a lot better, where you're kind of speeding people up into melee as opposed to trying to like fire with the Rumble Equalizer and the Karma Man for Q, which don't. They're both good in their own right. They don't always synergize in the right way. You can't really capitalize off of the slow onto slow all the time. And Birdalt going back to the tried and tested that Aatrox as now the Mar. Okay, flex pick between Xiao Hao and Crisp. Yes, indeed, and uh, one of the ways to keep your AD carry safe is just to say nope in a big area denial with an R button. Of course, has largely been ironically towards the support after ironically being in jungle, having ironically once upon a time being a top player. And Maokai has just been rehomed and replanted multiple times as a champion. Uh, this time around, we still need to wait to see where it decides to be uh, dropped. The Jinx ban here from Weibo Gaming, which has kind of snuck up the power pick ratings as the split's gone on and things like Smolder and Senna and Zeri all kind of been haunting this our is, screens. Um, this is before the Infinity Edge buffs as well. You know, oh, that's, yeah. that, that, so that champion is going to explode back into priority on 14.6. You have to imagine that'll be believe the playoffs patch for, for LPL playoffs. We'll, we'll figure that out. might be happy as well, then. Yeah, I mean, there are other champions there, too, in terms of the crit champions, which can make use of it. So of course, you can't build something like Navori and Infinity Edge at the same time. Um, I believe you can't anyway. I feel like that one's taken away from. But yeah, still, uh, that that's stuff to come. So, banning away some of the support pairings now, which could... Um, you know, be benefit from that Marco being flexed into the jungle. Alistair's gone from Chris. We did actually have a good game on it the last time. We did say that Chris largely been a ranged support player, but two melee supports banned away from him show that, of course, Chris, a uh, player of a great many champions. In fairness, his Alistair last game was actually really good. He managed to really be a huge part of thwarting those early dives, debating a Zeri here, which would lock Xiaohu into the Tristana, unless there's some real madness occurring. Nah. But, uh, yeah, Alex is immediately oh. saying none of that. Uh, of course, the Zeri locked in. But now, what's the response? Kepler will time into things like the Kaiser in the past. Of course, the Jinx off the table. Could look to an Aphelios, but I feel like the Kaiser maybe is an option to dive on to some of these 
Otherwise, oh, more slippery oh, options could make some sense. Uh, also, while well, not that we've seen it in the LPL, but the, there is the Poke Kaiser build as well, very, oh, very yes. strong. So there's a chance that you end up playing towards that. I think with the Poppy, Aatrox, and the Nautilus going zug zug, I think you're looking to really have something which can join them in the dive either way, though. Smolder could be there for scaling potential and then the ability to just kind of throw the ult over. Kaiser can be there for the dive. The Twitch that was hovered would also not be bad. Goes over to the Kaiser though. Has been a pick, which uh, feels like every time Kaiser is even borderline viable, LPL flocks towards it, as many carries do. It just allows them to play out as assassins, as opposed to just regular backline marksmen, a way that very, very few AD carries can do so. Last pick, flex between jungle and support. Chris always was a big Leona player, but he can potentially take that Maokai himself. That wouldn't be awful for him does struggle into the Nautilus and early lane. The Bard doesn't, and Chris does go back towards a range support. Zeri Bard, very, very mobile, allowing teams to get over walls. Bard is also one of the better champions at just getting around the map, being really obnoxious, being that roaming champion that Chris Bad is best has often been very good on. People will remember back in his world championship winning days, his Thresh was an absolute nightmare on the map with Dunby. Uh, we'll be looking to get some value here as He's got himself the Maokai, can look to be doing some work here with getting around the map to get things happening to set up those AD carries for success. So a reminder folks, Weibo, they'll put themselves in very, very good contention to be into that playoffs bra bracket if they win today. Game score matters a lot, they've already dropped one game. Um, and on the other side, it would lock out LGD from playoffs. Keep our eyes on that. And instead, themselves in trouble as they look to get onto the rift and cause some chaos around the bout to make sure these games work out. Um, as they make sure to you know, get themselves ready for a game. And again, this will be an important one for both teams. Of course, if LGD lose, they are out of playoffs. It's just not a possibility anymore, as far as I understand. And Weibo, how tight the playoffs race is right now, really don't want to drop here as things go on. Um, could get very difficult for them to manage yeah. if they lose. I mean, of course, they're not so, out, of course, but their remaining series are not easy ones. No, they're not. Invictus Gaming, definitely a team which you have to be a little worried about as Weibo because, uh, I mean, both of these teams are struggle, but IG, gotta feel like on recent form they'd be a little better. Nautilus, level one. What can they do with that? Dark Harvest on Meteor's Poppy as well. We'll pay attention Ooh. to that one. Is he gonna go for something a little bit more bursty? That'd be very interesting to see, of course. Can lie, to really dunk down on Shahu and Light and Crisp. A lot of squishies to potentially take to task. Those flash heroic charges but could become that little bit more dangerous to manage, and once upon a time, we used to see Warrior Poppy and the likes and going a bit more AD builds on the champion. Of course, these days really has defaulted more towards their tankier, bruisery options, but Poppy certainly has a bit of burst in her kit. So, I mean, he's gone for Cheap Shot Dark Harvest. I love it. I love that. He's just going to start slamming people as he can. Um, what this means is that Meteor... When he goes in, he won't have the phase rush to run out of a play, but oh my god, on that play, is he going to slap you for six? And um, potentially get himself onto the board early. Kepler and Jinjao are going to walk over this bot side. It is um, the Halo Blades on the Kaiser. We do see a couple of different builds from this. There is a chance that we see the Poke Kaiser. Um, I don't know whether that would be something that LPL Terries have really been uh, prioritizing towards, though. We haven't really seen the Poke build. There is technically a, a Zari build with AP as well, raising up in Solar Cube. You kind of need first strike for that one, so at least we know that one's off the table. Yeah, likely to be the case. And instead, early level one hook from uh, Jinjao. But of course, this is still into a bard whose level one is very nasty with those empowered autos and the cosmic bindings. But of course, actually, has decided to go for the early uh, hot chocolate mugs to put down. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you do actually see that fairly regularly. You stick yes. them into the mid lane, gives a bit of sustain there for your mid laner against what could have been a pretty obnoxious lane into the karma otherwise. But it does deny some potential early lane priority from the bard and the zone. Because their level one damage actually very strong, but then again, Nautilus just landing a hook and then getting the, the passive as well allows you to get extra plasma stuff. Stacks, and that means that you lose against Kaiser early. That's always why um, Kaiser Nautilus was very, very strong. Level one, two bits of CC to keep that plasma stacking. Shaha getting himself uh, Raptors into bot side clear, gets himself level three off that Gromp, I believe. And he'll get himself onto the map, maybe drop down a sapling or two to keep that bot lane safe from a rampant meteor who's going to walk into the other side of the map and get some extra um, knowledge on what's happening with this jungle clear. 
Shahau's kind of going for a bit of a... Well, no, Meteor's going for a wraparound. Okay, get something down. We'll force out the tether, but Shahau's just not really got any way to go until he has to flash. And so the early summoner down picks up those double healing shrines to keep himself back up to at least something resembling HP. Um, something else here as well. Meteor gets his first Dark Harvest stack of the game. Hey, Woo! Yeah, Dark Harvest like Poppy, let's go! And um, <laughs> this champion, I mean, you, you can't go slam into that W. There's no way that, I mean, the, the, the animation is so obvious from the uh, Tristana that when you start jumping, like, unless you have the Buster Shot post level 6, it is very, very hard to stop the Poppy from... Uh, on top of you getting that um, that that kind of grounding in and the extra damage from that really nasty too Of course that that's who can proc the dark harvest if it's still available So Shahu, not a great start for him uses up all of those shrines very early from the um, from the bard Gonna teleport back into lane maybe with something like a cull. I don't know exactly what it'll have a uh, gold fort And is that cull? There, you know, alongside the refillable pot so really Survive lane it feels like here especially after Meteor makes his presence known early on we get ourselves towards the side. Hook lands. Passive lands. Good. Stacks, but not able to pop it. Chris, but not going to be dealing with that. We'll throw down a couple of healing shrines to replace the ones he just took. Meteor roams over towards the skull crab. Claims it. You're seeing too much early action. Some early wards from Xiao Hao on the other side of the map. That's really it. There's been a huge amount of action outside of that mid lane looking. I really wonder what build. I, I, I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping that Kepler does actually go towards the poke build. The more I think about this game, actually, it does lose you some mid lane, mid game power. But I just look at the champions and Weibo, and I really don't think they have a way to outplay what happens with that champion. The ZDZ didn't quite work. A good work up here against Birdall here, at least in the top side. Ten CS lead right now. You kind of expect it from Renex very early. Another hook lands. No guardian this time. To be a little bit afraid. Of course, Bard with some of the changes has gotten. Surprisingly tanky as a champion with some of the items he gets to build. And, mm. a very big frustration for me as an Evelyn player. Blowing up the yeah. as easy as it once was. Um, There's definitely something about Bard building full tank and then still, you know, taking half your health with a auto cure. Really so it's, uh, it's sure something. You know, um, he was actually a real terror on Arena because they buffed his damage to make him a viable champion. But they buffed at the point where he would just auto cue you and you'd explode with a full AP Bard build. <laughs> They also gave, I'm pretty sure they gave Blitzcrank almost double damage on his ultimate as well. And that was also a fun one where you just build full AP and um, you disappear very quickly. Not the best time ever. <laughs> what is the name of Blitzcrank ultimate again? I'm, I can't remember. It's not Static Field, is it? Something like that. I wanted to give Static Shock and that's the wrong one. So maybe it is Static Field, something like that. Buddy. I'm a color caster. I know it is Blitzcrank. Girl. I say that. I know all of the fellows' abilities, but I can't yeah, name Blitzcrank's. 2009 champions, by the way. They've been around for uh, 15 years. God, that's, that's a, a weird time. thought. Your Gangplanks, your Garens, your Cho'Gaths, your Blitzcranks. They've been around for a bloody long time, folks. Dragon Spawn. LGD, they have themselves bot lane, t bot lane priority. They got themselves back into um, lane as well. It will be the AD Kaiser, so sadly not going to see ourselves the uh, the full poke variant. Well, well, I mean, it is a disgusting build. I'm sure many people will be happy not to see it build into the LPL right now. I just feel like it would have been a really powerful champion to bring into this game. But still, goes back onto the map. It feels like uh, LGD should have first swing at this dragon, should they want to. It also means perhaps the Kaiser being online at least a little bit earlier into the game and potentially able to threaten the other AD carries at a point where they really want to abuse things like Poppy's points of power and of course Karma at that one-two item mark. So synergistically with the team, I see that there is an angle for that there, even if I agree the poke build could certainly have been more than viable this game. But the decision has been made and instead we look to see Jun Zhao clearing out some of these visions as the magical journey has popped down to allow an extrication from the river for Xiao Hao who was claiming that scuttle crap. And um, particularly this wall here on blue side, on red side bot lane, very important for Zeri and for Bard. Allows you to pretty much choose the, the ability to reposition anywhere across that. Of course, Poppy can wall stun you out a lot of that stuff. And Meteor right now could have potentially flashed for a W stop there. Tell him to bot side. I'm going to try and do this one as a Meteor show in the mid. That's actually a fair amount of damage to the Jinjo flashes. Away does stay alive, but the summoner is down. Light throwing down the ultimate and throwing out a lot of burst fire. We'll get a bit of an additional chunk, but Jinjo survives at the very least. And while that's happening, topside ZDZ, um, I think on an individual level, he's actually pushed uh, Bertol well in games two and now game three as well. Game one, um, he really did eat the back end of a lot of very bad trades. But 20 CS up, or well, thereabouts, showing that he can actually keep down Bertol on his Aatrox that he's done a very good job with. 
in uh, Spring 24 so far. Weibo, despite the fact that they lost early game priority in this bot lane, after a couple of plays around the map, around uh, Bot River, and of course into that bot lane as well, get themselves first Dragon of the game. That's important, it allows them to push the anti-forwards. They have pushing lanes already. It feels like into mid game that will continue, which means that they'll get better entrances towards the Dragon. LGD, if they'd gotten that first Dragon, maybe could have delayed Weibo in terms of that soul win condition a little earlier. Yeah, could well have done. Of course, Weibo pretty happy with having claimed that one early on, especially considering they are in nominally the better scaling team, right? You've got Zeri and a Tristana with all the front line in front of them. It feels like the later the game goes, the easier it is to play out because often they do devolve into those front to backs and front to back with Maokai Renekton uh, with double AD carries behind feels pretty good. Not going to lie to you all. And on the other side, LGD going to have to find ways past that front line. You have got a Poppy and a Kaiser. Can you mention that? Um, so Weibo were the team that um, denied EDG their world championship last year. They beat them in the regional qualifiers, but that was EDG's style, playing the Marco double AD carry with um, Fofo and Uzi. That was the style which they were playing with the stuff like the Zeri and the um, and the Tristana. Big different compositions for them. Kaiser as well, obviously a big part of that meta too. Starting to creep its way back as it inevitably does into pro play. People, AD carries like this champion too much for it to not be around. She is very fun. Oh, I, I love playing Kaiser. I also just hate playing against Kaiser too, especially the poke version, versions that's not particularly fun but still way up are trying to go back to tried and tested and the lpl was a big composition of last year well, exactly over we go instead to bot side river and uh compositions of old beginning to rear their heads somewhat again and part of the reason why they were so popular they do work quite well on the synergistic front so you see the theory behind a comp like this at the very least as Crisp throws down a ward, spots out Meteor in the river, and immediately loses the ward he puts down. Light throws down a control ward and an ultra shot laser that does go wired and uh <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> step Wow, he's really stepping out like from here, it doesn't cost matter. You're not really gaining anything in this besides just like a little bit of ego, like haha, you missed. <laughs> you missed, you missed again. <laughs> Can't do, you touch think, this. do you think at the end of a mission, so I've been playing a load of hell divers, they tell you your accuracy score at the end of a level. Do you reckon they should do that for Zeri? That'd be great. <laughs> Battle pops the old doesn't get it out of ZDZ though. You can see that he's really struggling in the one v one matchup. Renekton and buffs coming through pretty hefty hit. Uh, Battle down that ultimate actually be a great time there with the fact that there is a potential turnaround for ZDZ could prove problematic of course eats the wrong end of an infernal chain to a darkened blade so just be a little bit wary nice combo again from Birdolf but down the ultimate means he's not really at any threat right now I wonder what build Birdolf's gonna go does he feel like he needs to go for the Sundered Sky early just to try and keep himself in longer trades or does he just say look I need to flank in these team fights in the earlier uh, they are oh that's a good wall stun remember he's got Dark Harvest as well big oh damage Jay's crisp Getting jumped over the turnaround damage is massive as the flashes over the wall from Xiao Hao and Xiao Hu get the first blood. It looked really good for a second until Weibo Gaming came from beyond the edge of the screen. One of the specialties of Tristana and Maokai, which was a huge LPL composition of last year, is that they respond from a huge difference away, a distance away. Xiao Hu jumps over the wall. The Maokai all comes flying over the wall and LG just completely disrespects it. Now suddenly, you know, Weibo gonna get themselves towards Groves on the top side of the map. They get themselves a kill onto their Tristana, who is a snowball champion at LGD. This poppy needs to get stuff done early. Already lost out on the first couple of plays of the game, which is an awkward moment for Meteor. Bit, of course, Meteor can now look to come over and contest the grubs. And the problem is you did burn a lot of ultimates and lots of flashes from Weibo Gaming. Xiao Hu, Xiao Hao, Crisp, all down those key summoner spells. So a little bit difficult, I think, to take uh, a consistent objective fight. And this will still be the five grub mark for LGD. Yeah, that's important, actually. I thought Weibo would be able to get more of that. But I guess using the marker ultimate and against um, the poppy, he was still, you know, um, as I like to call it, full build poppy. You get towards level 3, and um, you do a significant damage. This time it's level 7. Look how much damage you get through! The heal from Chris, the only thing which keeps him alive, by the way. Um, and even then, it's barely at that. Very close run stuff. If you managed to get the other park of the Mantra Cube, it would have been a very different scenario. Oh, yes. And uh, the colony he cashed in as well for Xiaohu at this point. Got first blood. Kraken's there already online. Feels pretty nice. Again, it's been a very slow early game. One kill in 12 minutes, especially when the kill only came 30 seconds or so ago it does lead us yeah. to a space where these 80 characters kind of been skilled for free and with something like um, the Kaiser, that's obviously important too. It's not like there is just one one no, carry no. on one side. And then the ca you do have the double the amount of bullets being fired, but uh, on the side of Weibo. But with the Karma buffing up the Kaiser, that's pretty good in regards to just allowing the 180 carry to do a little bit more work. But I think particularly when you've got a Poppy on one side and Mac on the other, one is much more happy to play slow than the other. Birdle pops the ult as the ZDZ. Damage coming on through. They're gonna trade back well enough. 
you know, alt for alt. No one actually up here to do anything more than see the top laners brawl. It is the 1v1 island for now, which has been a little unusual mm. this series when actually we have seen a lot of a jungle attention go towards the top lane over games 1 and 2. CDZ though, eking out a good advantage. She's um, going to be happy with how this early lane is going, Bertle. When he really does get individual advantages on the Aatrox, it feels like you just can't keep him out of team fights. This champion has uh, seen LGD2 break many of their victories. Now they've only got the three series wins. They have themselves some okay game wins. They've had some, a lot of three game series. Now, Kaiser shred through objectives pretty well. They're going to get towards this dragon nice and early. Weibo, do they contest? They have the Bard Portal to go through the wall if they want to reposition. Of course, with that new wall that's coming at the top end of the river, it can be a little bit harder to find your way in from red side in a safe manner. Especially banner. against Poppy. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly, especially against Poppy. Um, they won't decide to take the magical journey, which would have left a very easy target for Poppy to try and heroic charge so, someone into a wall. Also worth noting as well, um, so we talked about the poppy build and saying, hey, that's a Dark Harvest. Mm -hmm. What you got there, buddy? AP Marker on the other side. Oh, so yeah. Towards um, the Andres, because, of course, you don't have much magic damage on the side of Weibo. but It opens up something. See that the ward's put in. Oh, oh crisp. Oh, gets knocked out of his magical journey. And in Ted is a magical journey into an early grave. <laughs> Meteor must have like four or five Dark Harvest He's stacks at this point, three. really. I, that's the third one, I believe. Ah, uh, it's. I think he might have got another one from somewhere. I can't remember exactly where he's got all of them from, but still, he's getting things up on a pretty good clip. It's only a really good solo key room. They had to nerf it for Aram because obviously you get a it's million easy. kill yeah, participation. Yeah, yeah. But wait, Shahu, do Shahu, not not again. So sorry, cool. Okay, okay, right. It's like surely they're not not two people will die in the same place from Wave of to exactly the same thing. Still. LGD, they get something on the board. They were falling quite far behind in terms of early game gold. It's only no, it was only about one and a half thousand gold, but at this point in the game, it can be pretty significant at that point. So items starting to come in. We've got Xiao Hao with his ult again. He has himself that mask from the uh, haunting guys coming through. Hai Chao has no flash. Light had to flash over the wall at the other side. The turret is turned off immediately. Hai Chao trying to heal up. Does a fairly decent job of it. Overcomes the poppy with the keeper's verdict available. Which leaves Hai Chao Hao out to drive, forced away from the magical journey and into the waiting hands of Kepler as he flashes on through. It's a one for one as LGD punish Weibo's over-indexing into the bot lane. <laughs> yeah, that tree has definitely been pruned in this one. And um, Meteor, that's oh, another Dark Harvest style. just going to do that one. Shahu is now left alone on bot side. Shahu doesn't have Buster Shot or Flash. Ooh. They have to call the teleport. There is, but there's a response teleport on the other side. But wait, the magical journey means everyone from the side of Weibo is here. They lose one immediately, which makes this a 3v3, but the HP bars getting very difficult to manage. Just Birdle healing back up. Light nowhere to go. Trying to throw out the burst fire, not getting that much damage. Finally stunned into a wall. It's just not enough. Hi, Chow. Meteor so lives. Much a meteor is still damn well alive. LGD. Break Weibo in the bot lane. Oh my god, they're broken in half. That's like four kills in the last minute. Oh. LGD. LGD explode into life, but what the hell was Xiao Hu doing overstaying in that bot side? A huge critical error from Weibo as they fail to get a single kill in return. How does this start? You know, Light gets kind of punished towards the bot side. We didn't even see that on live. Guess the flash pulled away from him. Yes, you do have um, High Trap dying at the very start of this play, so it is one kill in the great scheme of things, but the Poppy Ultimate means that you're kind of separating out the first target, saying, okay, let's just get one person down. Unfortunate flash, but after this point is where Xiao Hu makes the critical error. You think, okay, we've used all of these uh, abilities. He just greets your next wave. No Buster Shot, no Flash. You can't get away from the Poppy. And though you're calling through the teleports, there are extra teleports to come through from LGD as well. And things massively fall apart. As soon as the Tristan is there not putting out the extra damage, as soon as that they go down, it feels like the game's just really away from them. They don't have the items to be playing like this at this point. LGD, huge gold injection for them. Because Light lost that flash 30 seconds before this play as well. The moment he got caught in the Infernal Chains and knocked around with the Dark Blade, there was nowhere for that Zeri to go. Kepler turns up towards the end of it. He's now 2-0. Herald summoned in mid lane. They've got five grub stacks as well. This is suddenly looking like LGD with a serious snowball. And a nice ultimate, however, from Crisp does deny the Herald charge. So, who are the real big winners of this? High Chow, of course, walks away 2 0 and 2. Very happy with that one. And two kills on Kepler. God, he's going to be so strong as well. Because, a reminder, we're saying, yes, double AD carries on the side of Weibo, but there's an enchanted AD carry for the side of LGD. Someone like Bard can't really do the same. Now, they can bring some more, you know, support items in the way that they always do. But when High Chow starts putting on the. The, the shields onto the likes of Kaiser to allow them to keep running. Of course, they have the cleanse and no ghost. The karma allows you to kind of bridge the gap that way. Xiao Hu, just the scene of his crime, managed to get away with this. I'm, of course, 
one so, of the ways you are trying to play this Tristana is very aggressively as a split push has got a lot of the initial gold here but we're still waiting on that second item to be completed to be truly valuable again I think also um I wonder whether we're gonna so most of the time in terms of eight armor items now we get the Knight's Vow uh, the Frozen Heart's fallen off I think Frozen Heart is very valuable for me to in this game if you can pick that one up I think that bird all He's likely going towards a Profane Hydra second item instead of the first. The Sunder Sky just helps you so much in the Bruiser Viva, Bruiser yeah, matchups. Yeah, yeah. Meteor heading topside now. Xiaohu has a lot of gold. He is not impervious though. He needs to be careful. Yeah, got himself a flash in the Buster Shot this time around, so a lot harder to manage as uh, Tristana often is with her extreme amounts of mobility. Um, instead, it's just Meteor and Jinjiao just looking to. Wander the river, kind of make sure they are hovering between some potentially threatening areas. We'll be on vision as they come up, though, as there is a lot of wards here from Weibo Gaming. Yeah, they do have the Mark Isle, who's just in a pretty good position to change some things. And Chris can also reposition a lot of people very, very quickly. Meteor can wall stun people out of that tunnel, can also use the W to technically ground them through. It counts as like a slow dash through a wall. You see that the Leandri is on the Mark Isle, doing some decent work with the Scorch Claw as well. And definitely helps you kind of put up some um, decent numbers there. So. LGD. They are waiting in some ways, actually. So we talked about Kaiser Bill, so it is going to be on hit for now. Typically, we've seen the Nashes after this point, so Kepler will likely go towards more AP towards the late game. There isn't a huge amount of magic damage crossed, arrayed across the LGD team. You can see that um, there's a lot of... You know, there are Ninja Tabbies, but no real Merc Treads or anything mm. like that. It feels like... Um, if you go towards three items in the Kaiser, even though it's not the full poking Zodia, it would still be very dangerous. In picture in picture, the uh, Nady Carry of LGD, Haichao and Kepler do claim themselves... A second dragon. Of course, with two items now on the Kaiser, her ability to shred through objectives is very, very high. Rage Blade and the passive cycling does a lot of work to those neutral objectives. Xiao Hu, though, continues to shove very aggressively. He's got Xiao Hao behind him in the jungle to try and shield him should people try to be a bit too aggressive about shoving into him. CDZ had the shove in bot side, so. Wimbo Gaming trying their very best to stall out and continue to be a threat in this game now. They've got the Navori Quick Blades on to Xiaohu. The second iron on the Tristana feeling a little bit more valuable again. Another thing which I um, really want to bring up in this point too, uh, is we have two items on Hai Xiaohu is now in a really good point. In most compositions, the Karma doesn't really do much late game towards stuff like Shin Sao, maybe the Renekton if you go towards like the more in the last couple of games too. If you land a Mantra Q onto Shao Hua Lights, they are going to explode in this game. So Weibo need to actually be quite careful about where they're allowing Hai Chao into the game at this point. Very powerful from the mid lane. That's why Karma's still been picked up even after the nerfs to the QAP ratio. The items are very strong. Still just a very strong champion once you hit these item marks. And these carries don't have a huge amount of sustain mid team fight with from or from an enchanter with shields and heals. The prognosis here from the stats bot. So about a 56% chance on paper at least from a statistical point of view. LGD coming out with the win. Seen of course that those often don't survive contact with the actual game state. But for now I just feel like LGD are the ones with the, the favoured position. Bird out. Does There's Plasma. Field. And there is the hop and the buster shot away and ults Kepler out of yes. his own ultimate. Kepler mistimes it. He mistimes it and Xiaohu gets an incredible buster shot to stop the Kaiser flight. <laughs> I have never seen that. The two for one catching two birds quite literally with one shot. I kind of blanked on that for a moment. And then I wait, wait, there's a shield on Kepler. What happened? He got his ult cancelled. Ult and now topside. topside how Chai in a dangerous position but does have defiance to back away. So should be just fine. ZZ pops that ultimate, tries to chunk him down. Maybe there's a marker out which could threaten things too. This play though, Xiaohu throws the bus to shot. And let's be honest, this is not a prediction or reaction. He didn't know he was there. He sees the plaza on himself and we have a fight top side now. Xiaohu gonna get knocked up with a depth charge, flashing away with a phase rush. Gets to stay safe, but the tower does fall. All the while though, Bird all on the other side will likely claim that one. So mm. some ultimates drop, but Xiaohu being down the flash to relatively squishy Maokai can prove problematic. And yeah, next time Kepler has his ult up, things are gonna get very, very spicy. Kepler is going towards the Nash's third, so it will be the three upgrade Kaiser coming through at the three item mark. Um gonna get a picture in picture of what happened here. Yeah, we did say it was gonna be the Mark Isle. And actually what Jinja does is block up the Mark Isle, one of the tendrils to make sure that uh, I believe that Hijack can make it out there. Meteor gets a wall stun. Knocks up the Tristan who flashes away, flash over the wall from Meteor. The hat ground slam there with the hammer doing a lot of work. The hammer shock alongside everybody else doing enough to get another kill. And now with the jungle with the mid laner dead, it's a 4v5 a Baron. 
I love that Meteor has gone for Eclipse. He has seven Let's Dark go. Seal stacks. Shao who had no ult because he used it in that play bot side and it opens up the Baron to potentially put Weibo into a loss. Okay, Shao Hao reminder, no flash and no ultimate, and there is no blast cone. Shao uh, not getting in as a magical has... journey. So that's one way of potentially getting in, but it's timed out. Wait, that's a fantastic tempered fate to stop the Baron going down straight away. Shao can now maybe get in with a twisted advance. Gets in there, and the trap two people dead. Dragon, sorry, Baron secured. It's starting to turn around, begins to fly his Birdle with the world end of flying. His Kepler ulted to the backside with the killer instinct light. Cannot run far enough away. It looked good for a second until LGD turned on the afterburners. Weibo get crushed around topside and Baron, and they are crushed by the weight of a falling meteor. This poppy has absolutely mashed the last part of this, well, the last minute or two of this game, and it feels like the item break points from LGD have really helped them keep team fighting. Feels like DDC had a moment to absolutely slaughter this game, particularly with Chris Ultimate stopping the Baron, allowing this kind of extra kind of play towards them. But Jin Zhao stops CDC getting a great play towards it, can't get the Empower Q, roots it up by Hai Chao and Kepler. This Karma doing a huge amount of work alongside the rest of the team. Yeah, and then of course over the wall comes Birdol, having kept Hai Chao out of the pit for large portions of it. Oh, got a bit dicey. Right. So, Profane Hydra from Birdle, we saw that in the last fight, and that did some damage. Now we have the Nashes coming in from Kepler. He's got himself an extra Fiendish Codex as well, might even be going towards something uh, like Horizon Focus himself, if he feels like he wants to get some extra cooldown reduction. It doesn't build into stuff like Banshees and Zonias anymore. It could just be a misclick, we'll just see how that one goes, but either way, Kepler, very, very strong with the W upgrade now, and that means that Weibo are gonna feel a lot harder pressed to play at range and try and wait for the big engage, particularly if these Kaiser W start landing, you are going to get shunked. What should it be Lich Bane, just for the additional empowered order? With a bit of ability haste, it would actually be that <laughs> so awful if he's going to assassinate not people. Not to talk suppose. about Arena too much, one of my favourite Kaiser builds was Ethereal Weapon, where your abilities apply on hits. Oh, so no. you build Nashes and Lich Bane and, and Blade of the Rune King, and you'd fire a W and it'd apply all three on oh, the W. No. It was It was quite intense. <laughs> Right, okay, Baron push in from LGD, they're gonna get themselves a dragon, that'll be sold points, they're gonna potentially get themselves a push into top lane to finally break open that top lane tower as well, can't imagine Weber holding onto that one with this Baron buff available. So LGD going through top side, getting some vision down, hopefully clearing some stuff out, they're gonna spot a couple of these pink wards on the way, and Weber can't hold onto this tower, this one was kind of always a given, Weber gonna start bleeding some gold out in structures. You're on the verge of being down Cloud Soul when you've got AD carries trying to disengage from a Poppy Aatrox Kaiser Karma. That is so much speed. It's going to turn into Drive to Survive here, guys. You are getting behind the scenes of some F1 drivers looking to break their so, opponents on the rift. So, funnily enough, last year, Rare Atom's mid laner was called Strive. And, no. uh, for me, every time it was like, every time he did well, or it was, it was all about him, it was Strive to Survive. Um, sadly, he's not on the roster, so that he didn't survive. Um, sad news yeah. there, I suppose. But LGD, um, last of that Baron buff. It's not going to be the explosive Baron power play, but it's still going to be a lot of big item break points. They have themselves a significant gold lead. Weibo, they can just get themselves these one isolated picks with stuff like the, the Zeri, Bard, Tristana, and the Maokai all kind of helping pick people out of position. So LGD, they're not out of the woods just yet. In fact, there's an angry tree in those woods waiting for them. But... LGD still hold themselves the advantage with, as we said, big item break points. I have to admit, I've spent the last 20 seconds or so thinking of potential driver name puns. Yeah. And the best I've got is High Chamilton, which I don't think is excellent, <laughs> but it's what we've got. Oh, that's good. I like that one. Okay, well. Um, yeah, I don't have any more. Yeah, that's the best I've got for now. I tried for staff and there was just no way. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, push in towards the bot side. Baron buff has run out. We don't have Kaiser here right now for the W poke, but when they start landing, just remember the W refund cooldown is through. Here comes the first. It's not the best damage, but the Karma Mantra Q definitely helps with that. Kepler firing another one over. Misses that one at least. Taking themselves the inner turret without the help of the Baron. LGD, they have a serious death ball starting to roll now. There's Mantra E's. The Mantra Q is very powerful. Uh, Weibo here, sat in their awake hits. A little bit worse for wear. Green's normally supposed to be a colour, meaning go, all things good. And unfortunately, the systems this time around looking a little bit red. Crisp on a potential flank angle. I don't know whether this one's going to be CDC can angle. teleport, so he has got his choice of wards to go to. Let's see what they can do. This feels like last chance. Here comes Here the marker. Here comes the teleport. Here comes the last chance. Meteor throws down one and knocks away the Tristana. A 4v5 with so much of a DPS gone. The big tempered fate, though, catches four. Massive healing backwards and Shahu's back around. They've got two already. And now the rest of LGD have to run away to safety. What an ultimate from Crisp. Oh, but Crisp has now gone too far. He has no flash in the next few seconds. Danger Ooh. mode for them. 
as Weibo, they blow both teleports in that. Xiaohu shunts it out, teleports back in to get closer to the play. And now they're able to push up and get something. How many times can they make this play though? It's not gonna get a Baron, it's on the wrong timing for that. It's not gonna get a Dragon, it's on the wrong timing for that as well. They get themselves two turrets for this play, but this is the last real power play they had with their summoners. It's also gonna tie them over to potentially three items onto Xiaohu. You can see how much damage Light was doing in this play. This Zeri finally gets a grouped up team fight with that lightning start railing through different members. Hero of this fight is Crisp once again though. You know, Crisp um, in the World Finals, he had one of the worst barred games that I can remember in recent memory. This time though, getting great value. The redemption even comes over for extra damage. Chris, maximum value out of this team fight. But how many times can Weibo do this? They, own, they don't have any teleports to pull that off again. It's a good moment, but it needs to be done more consistently at least. Buys you a three and a half items, Zeri. That's pretty scary. Infinity Edge, Hurricane, the uh, Hex Drinker as well. Light, how often has he been the game winner for Weibo Gaming when things have looked dire? He's been so good in those late game scenarios. The problem is, it's a four item build on the other side for Kaplu, who has got that Horizon Focus we were musing about. But he doesn't have any magic pen, and now we have a Hex Drinker coming in from the side of Light and a Spirit Visage for ZDZ. So his poke is actually going to start falling off a little bit until he builds up something like a Crypt Bloom, which can really help out his damage build. He doesn't exactly have himself any magic pen right now. Third item just completed for Xiaohu as well as picked up a Bloodthirst to try and survive out some of the early poke and uh, also call out Xiao Hao. Second item on this AP Maokai gone towards the Imperial Mandate, which once upon a time was a bit of a staple for supportive AP carries. This time around we'll be looking to double up uh, the damage for some of those ADs. A reminder, as this game gets close in our deciding game here, um, LGD lose, they are out of playoffs. Weibo lose, they're not out, but they do miss out on a chance to leapfrog their way back up towards about 8th place and get themselves into playoff standings. 8th, ninth place, something around there. They overtake LNG and anyone's legend with a win here. If they lose, things get very dicey. You have a couple of series left in this split where you have to really start questioning whether they can win them. JDG, Invictus Gaming, no slouches, and Weibo have shown a lot of flaws in their gameplay. LGD, if they can finish things off here, they keep a miracle run dream alive, and they put Weibo's to rest. They need to close out this game though. That last teleport flank did break them just a little bit. That tier 2 in mid lane still holding. Of course, an inhibitor exposed in mid lane for LGD means if Weibo pull off another one of those fights, the game can end pretty swiftly with the base broken already. See that the AP, uh, AP W's from Kaiser doing a lot of work. Xiaohu jumping all the way over towards Baron. Of course, he has the Novori, so he can start charging up his jump again very quickly. Vision control gone. How much time are you going to have to use these AP? That's too short, Kepler. You've got to get closer, pushing these minions in, but now he doesn't have his W for the next play. Baron's just gone. Yeah, and they're not going to take the dragon on the other side either. They just back away too late. The ultimate's actually... Very lazy. Well. Yeah. Very, very lazy from LGD. I know they don't want to walk into a Mark out and the bar and the Bard ult, potentially open up for a play of a Kepler. Lazy with the positioning on the W. LGD, not close enough. They will get themselves a Cloud Soul at trade for the Baron. So Weibo, they want to get themselves pressure on the map. Weibo, staying in topside to keep pushing on with the Baron. Exactly that. Xiaohu did not back away. He did stay in this top lane. He's got himself three items in level 17. He is going to be a shoving machine. I don't think he's going to be able to attack the tier 2 quite in time, but we'll at least get the waves shoved out and set them up for later, Blue Peter Star. So, Cloud Soul, very good for Aatrox. Pretty good for Poppy too, actually. Even Kaiser likes it. Um, but the problem is um, that movement speed is very hard to use when you CC'd up by a Maokai and by a Bard. So, Weibo, if they land the CC, that Cloud Soul doesn't have to mean anything. This feels like an economy baron. Feels like one which is here just to kind of like solve the uh, the debt to Weibo from uh, the, the gold deficit they played at for most of this game. Like very, very strong. And he has been the real shining star for Weibo. I can put a lot of criticism elsewhere on the roster, pretty much every role, but Light's the one player I say, you know what? He's actually been good. He's been one of our very best AD carries in the LPL, and he's on a late game Zeri. Zeri versus Kaisa, late game. We've almost got something like a Void Staff for the Crip Bloom coming in for Kepler. If you can complete that before the next big fight, that would be a game changer. I just don't know if he'll have the goal for it, though. I don't think he will. At least the Blighting Jewel means that his poke is going to hit that little bit harder. It could be very valuable because the range here from LGD could prove to be a bit of a game changer if they can start hitting some of those Ws. So far, Kepler, yeah. a bit of a swing and a miss so far. The hook lands on the other side to Shao Hao, though. He's knocked up, it goes Kaiser down! But it's a one turnaround kill already. The Nautilus dies to the hands of light. Big chunk on the other side, and that will be Meteor falling. Oh, over comes a ZDZ. They hop over the wall, flash away from Hightower. Big slow on the Soul Flare, but the one magical journey means people come on in. But Bernal into the backside with the Whirlender running. It's just not going to matter because, of course, on the other side, 
Light picks up a triple. Zhao Hu picks up a one for himself as well. And Weibo Gaming win the fight. Consistently inconsistent might explain their heart rate at this point. Weibo, if they lost this, would have put themselves in a very dangerous spot. They've done enough though. And with the teleport back to base from Haichou, I just don't think it's enough. He'll try and wave clip. And actually it will be, I'll take that back. Weibo, they win the fight. They push into the base, they take two inhibitors, but they don't end the game. LGD have one last shot as they've thrown a couple into the into the wild, really. That last team fight, Kepler jumps into a huge amount of damage from Light. We'll see that in the replay. They get a pick onto Xiao Hao, and that's a good start for this. The CC lands, you have the plasma on top of it, but look at how much damage Kepler takes. Jumps into the Kaiser, uh, into the Zeri, who does destroys the HP bar. Kepler, very, very unwise decision of him to follow that in so deeply. As soon as the Kaiser doesn't have the ability to keep jump, jumping forwards with high HP, just cannot carry this fight. And a flash over the wall immediately from ZDZ and Light to claim that one. Of course, Light got very low there. And does nearly go down, but that final stun does so much to keep this area alive. And of course, you can see how stressed the backroom staff are. Can you play them? The heart rates must be hitting a little bit of arrhythmia right now. Okay, so Kepler has Void Staff now. You can see that he's doing more damage to ZDZ than he was before. These fights have not been happening quick enough, quick enough though, for the Pope Kaiser to really be the problematic champion, though. Again, this is why we were saying, hey, what happens if we do have the Pope Kaiser as the Observer's Highlight Award? Shao who has teleport ZDZ doesn't, but it does mean that um, Weibo spot when Kepler is charging up the W, which can help you have a bit of advanced notice. Really need to see how much damage this Pope Kaiser can do. Again, he's just stood on a ward as he's firing them. 5-1-1, one, 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 but not having the late game impact. Nope, not managing to find what they were looking for. Xiaohu now with a Guardian Angel completed as well. This Tristan was already proving a bit of a nightmare to manage. You've got a Guardian Angel on Light as well, who has foregone anything like the uh, Lord Dominic's regard. Guardian Angel on ZDZ. That is three extra lives you've got to get through. And yes, you can do that. But getting a pick onto one of these important members is so challenging now for LGD. Uh, particularly with Weibo having the level 18 Tristana, just playing at such a long range. Got the pop to try and save the turret. The bomb already doing some significant damage to Jinjiao and Kepler, though. Meteor, big damage. And we do have a cross map. Potential backstop. ZDZ caught out. Can they just Kaiser roll onto I this? I think they could go on in. There's a teleport coming as well. This is a huge moment. They're teleporting back themselves. Light. Kepler in a dangerous position. Needs to find his light. way out. Begins to run away as light. Does so much damage to Tempered Fate just wide. And it means that Kepler out of this fight. Jinjiao needs to run away. But the magical journey is in a wall slide with a spark surge towards could, what could be an electrifying end to the game. They tried to get the pick and they lose a member. LGD overstay for that play onto ZDZ. They don't even get his Guardian Angel. They should have just kept Bird in bot lane and tried to delay the backs. I think they can get that even with a 4v1 and look to back off. Big mistake from LGD in the late game again. This team, we said they look better than their series score, but these kind of mistakes in clutch moments have been the difference maker against them. The knife has definitely been on its edge for a lot of this series, but this one, it feels like Weibo, with their veterancy in the late game, have just had the better heads on their shoulders. Hit the Kaiser W. You have a lot of ability to gun this guy down, but I just think you have to back off. You can't commit this heavily. You don't have the phase rush on the Poppy. This is the negative of this build. When you do your full combo, normally you can run away as the Poppy. You can't do that with the Dark Harvest. And Light's so threatening. I feel like in most of the fights, Light just hopping over into wall and getting into that pocket to get some good damage down has been the difference maker. And LGD have not been able to use Karma Mantra Qs and the Kaiser Ws to be the difference maker themselves. Still got to deal with all three of those GAs as well. What a challenging position for LGD. What a solid comeback from Weibo Gaming when it was looking pretty dire. In the earlier stage of the game, the Tempered Fate goes wide for once. Crisp has normally been so clean with those. Now, actually, it's LGD in position around the Baron. Elder Dragon spawning in 13 seconds. Are we seeing a trade or a contest? Well, I think that LGD, they do have a late game. Kaiser cuts it down quickly, has the Rage Blade, but this will be at threat of a steal. Shaohao's in the area. Gonna try and nick this one. I knocked away. That's a solid Keeper's Virgin. He's up a 4v5. ZDZ to the back. Sangue, a lot of healing. Will go down into the Jay, but Kepler already down so low. And no realistic way to heal up. Has got a Honey Fruit behind him at best. It can help. CDC crawls his way out. He has a teleport. He can go back. They have vision on him from the horizon focus. They know he's doing this. Empowered recalls will get some out. How many will it get out? Light? Oh boy. They've just Hit lost the their queue. They've lost their AD carry, and the rest of LGD need to back away, and the rest of Weibo coming to interrupt them. I think they're going to lose at least one here. No, the empowered recalls gets one. Can oh, they get another? No way! There's no jump forward from Shahu. So, LGD. 
amidst everything else and saying that it has been on the knife's edge, which is cut against them more often than not. They walk away with a Baron on five members as Weibo are left spectating. Elder is up. There are two inips down. There is a chance of potentially a backdoor from someone from Weibo. They have one teleport. CD is not the best at killing towers, but you got to show that threat. At least put it on the table. LGD, they get back out onto the map. They're ready to contest. Well, of course, they lost a Nexus turret taking the Baron, so LGD took the gamble, gets away with it. If all gone wrong, that would have been game over. ZDZ hit with another W. Birdle looking for the flank, and the Elder Dragon the next point of contest. I wonder... Well, no, Birdle, no, no teleports. Wondering if you could just go towards mid lane. You can see there's a there's a help flag from Weibo onto the mid wave. They don't want to let that minion wave go completely there. Double AD carries, shredding down the Elder. Big soul flare on a shower who down about half HP course with the bloodthirst should be able to heal up relatively well. Watch for the keepers very as well. The Malka ultimate comes flying across nature's ground. Jinjao. Things work. There's Jinjao in danger down that lower territory. The double keepers verdict means this should be Elder for LGD. Light slides over the wall. They must secure, but look at the HP bars, they're so desperately low. Have claimed the Elder. Bird all! Bird all damage in the backside. And they roar to life. ZDZ comes down, the crocodile falling. Shao Hao trying to run away. Gets hit with the W. The Elder, Elder Dragon Burn! Now they're resetting! No! It's doubles! Furthing the side of Kepler, who goes flying over the wall with Hydro with the W, trying to get the roots to keep light down for the kites. He's down, he's dead, the light is snuff. Weibo Gaming once again fall at the final hurdle. You don't need a telescope to see the damage that Kepler is doing. 9 1 and 2, so often locked out of the late game. But with this victory, Weibo are in dire straits. They are not currently in playoffs. And LGD, there is a slim, slim hope for them still. They take the series 2 to 1 and put themselves at 4 and 10 in the standings. Absolute scenes here in Shanghai. It was high drama to be sure. It looked like Weibo Gaming and find their way back. They had full builds, eight lives to work with, three folks, guardian angels. Folks, folks, folks. This is very dramatic. There is another series happening right now, and we might have to jump straight into Sorry. that. We're going to go see exactly what's happening with TT versus WE. That's taking place in Xi'an. It's a different arena. We're going to switch over to that now. Congratulations.